In this video we're thinking about burns again and we want to look at what causes burns, the etiology. And of course if you're watching in the States you don't have the, uh, the A. Now obviously burns can be caused by heat. Most obvious cause of burns. Um, and a lot of burns are caused by moist heat involving hot water and we call these scalds. So these are caused by hot water or by hot steam. And steam if it's pressurised can actually be hotter than 100 degrees centigrade. And scalds um, are about 80% of the burns we see in children are actually caused by, um, caused by scalds by hot water. But heat can also cause burns via the mechanism of uh, flames. Things can be burning. Uh, th this is a more common cause of injury in older children as, as well as adults. So it can be from things like burning objects or one we see quite commonly in A&E is different sorts of fuels, so lighter fuel or petrol burning that causes flames. And the heat can also be from hot objects. Where the heat goes directly from a hot object via direct conduction into the uh, tissues of the body. And with heat injuries especially, there's two factors involved. There is the temperature so the greater the temperature, the greater the injury is likely to be. But there's also the time of contact with the tissues of the body. So, for example, research has shown that if the uh, hand is immersed in water at 48.8 degrees centigrade, 48.8 degrees centigrade, after five minutes, that heat will be sufficient to cause a full thickness injury. But that will take five minutes at 48.8 degrees C. But if we have it a uh, higher temperature, so for example, normally when we're drinking hot drinks, tea or coffee, they're going to be 71 to 80 degrees centigrade, or, or even higher if we've just poured some boiling water from the kettle. And above 71 degrees centigrade, then th there can be full thick thickness injury on, uh, on contact. And certainly with, uh, as the water approaches boiling, full thickness injuries will be instantly, will be instantly caused. So it's the temperature and the duration of exposure we always have to think about. So heat is one cause of burns. And another cause, um, may, maybe less ob obvious, is friction. Friction burns. Now, um, when, there's, when there's friction, when two things are rubbing together, then I can already feel that my hand is getting, is getting hot there, because friction is going to generate heat. So it is quite reasonable to, um, to call these burn injuries. And the friction often leads to what we call abrasions. Abrasions are injuries caused by wearing or scraping. And they're, they're usually superficial, but not always, because the friction could uh, cut deeper into the tissues. So friction burns another cause. Another one you'll probably have heard of is uh, electricity. Electricity as a cause of burns. Now, in old-fashioned light bulbs, the current went through the coil and the coil would glow white hot. Or in uh, electric fire, um, the current goes through a resistor and it generates the heat. And it's the same with the tissues of the body. As the electrical current passes through the tissues of the body, it'll experience resistance and that will, um, that will generate heat. And unfortunately, throughout all generations of humanity, a very few people have been unfortunate. They've been killed by lightning, which of course is very high voltage electricity. But more common, we come across uh, electrical burns from alternating current and from direct current, the two forms of electricity. So alternating current from the uh, normal domestic voltage in houses, factories. Direct current 
increasingly common now because it comes from um, solar panels and solar panels can generate very high voltages and um, a much lower voltage of direct current is needed to cause death compared to the voltage of uh, alternating current. But the problem with alternating current is when you're in contact with it, it can cause tetany, it can cause spasm and, and you can be unable to let go of the object causing the electrocution. And of course with electricity we need to look for an entry wound and we need to look for uh, an exit wound as well. Um, another cause of burns, uh, radiation. We can see this in hospitals sometimes uh, when we do deep x-ray therapy um, for malignancies um, that it can it can burn the skin but most commonly of course this is from, from the sun the ultraviolet light from the sun and the uh, well the ultraviolet component of the light tends to damage the skin directly uh, the infrared uh, component carries the, the heat and can cause can cause burning so radiation as a cause. And then the other kind of burns we talk about are uh, chemical. Chemical burning. And uh, chemical burns are more common in less economically developed countries, unfortunately. Um, but these can be caused by acids. And they can also be caused by alkalis. So acids you might remember are low pH, pH. pH is to do with the uh, negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, but you can think of it as a power of hydrogen, the amount of um, hydrogen ions released in solution. So low pH is like, a, well, technically an acid is one to seven, but low pH is a one, two, three, can cause an injury. Well, any acid can, if again, if it's in contact with the skin for longer, um, durations. So for acids we might think of, uh, well, that's quite a few, um, carbonic acid, um, white, white phosphorus, I do hope you're not unfortunate enough to come across white phosphorus injuries from, uh, from um, shells, bombs, whatever. Uh, more commonly, maybe sulfuric, H2SO4, hydrochloric acid. Sulfuric acid is quite a common one because this is battery acids, and um, you might have come across patients who've been the victim of these evil acid attacks. Often, sulfuric acid is being used for that. And uh, the, the acids will damage the tissues directly. But acids also cause what we call a coagulation necrosis. So um, what they will do is the normal blood vessels, you know, taking blood to a, to a tissue as we know, there's an arterial branch taking blood to an area of tissue, you know, the area of tissue there or there, that's normally perfused, then there can be a blood clotting. Um, the acids can induce blood clotting. Um, the coag that's the coagulation and then as a result of that the blood's not getting to the tissue so we get an area of uh, necrosis. Um, whereas uh, alkalines, alkalines actually, um, alkalines dissolve protein and collagen actually. Um, they will physically uh, dissolve tissues and can therefore cause deep tissue destruction and again they'll cause necrosis. Of course, death of tissue in exactly the same way the acids will, but the alkalines do it by uh, dissolving the tissues, and uh, very nasty wounds can can result. So th th this can be things like uh, cement or plaster for for plastering walls, hydrocarbons. Um, tar is alkaline, uh, ammonia, or all, all alkalines. And, and the, these have um, pHs that are, are high, so uh, one would be strong acid, 
uh, 7 would be neutral and uh, 14 would be a strong alkaline. So ammonia, for example, in reasonable concentration has got a pH of, of 14. So some different causes of burns there. Not, not, just simple, uh, not, not just simple thermal injuries, a few other things to, interesting to think about, and we do come across these. Um, also, we, we could, all of these really can be uh, intentional or uh, unintentional. So we could include all of these here really, all of them, and decide whether they are uh, intentional. Or, or unintentional. Hopefully most of the ones you come across will be unintentional, they'll be pure accidents. Uh, but unfortunately we do see quite a lot of uh, intentional burns. We've already mentioned uh, acid attacks. Um, tends to be children and, and vulnerable people, like a vulnerable elderly that, that uh, victims of uh, intentional burns injury. So for example, if a child had, um, these are a child's uh, feet here, the legs and feet. Um, it'd be quite common to get a burn on, on one, of course, but if, if, if there was sort of bilateral injuries and there was burning below a particular level on both sides, um, that, that's an indicator that it may well be an intentional injury because the child has been dipped into hot water. Dip, dip, dipping, dipping injuries, we would call these. Or well, another cause of unintentional injuries is uh, cigarette burns, which will cause small areas of full thickness in injury. So do, do bear that in mind, the intentional or the unintentional. Of course, all this um, ties in quite nicely with prevention as well. Um, prevention of burns is so important to our role as health educators and uh, health promoters. Uh, a lot of burns we see in A&E department are certainly children, not all by any means, but we see a lot in children. So I do think about children in the kitchen, especially transferring hot fluids, transferring pans. Do think about loose flexes that a child could grab. Think about fire guards. Um, overseas, I've come across quite a few in, in less economically developed areas of uh, people working with plastic, uh, heating up plastic to remould it or to melt it or to use it as a fuel. It gives off very toxic fumes, plastic, such as dioxins. Um, but also it's prone to uh, explosions. And if it com comes in contact with the skin, it sticks and causes really quite nasty injuries as people try and work with plastic in the domestic situation. And always think about risk groups as well, children, the elderly, and the big risk groups, particularly for, well, for all forms of uh, burns, really. Um, two big risk groups are alcohol users. I wouldn't like to give you a figure, but an awful lot of people that come into A&E department with any form of burns have been using alcohol. And the other risk is smokers, of course, for the direct, uh, direct flames effect. So just a few, uh, few causes of burns and uh, a few basic thoughts on how to prevent burns.